Hi there, this is going to be a daily reading for today, December 10th. And you know, the 10th or 10s in general, you know, really symbolize completion. So a lot of people may be feeling this wrap up of things, whether it's relationships or situations or, you know, very big, huge life cycles, you're going to start feeling that energy clear out and shift. And a lot of people have been feeling this energy, you know, since the month started. For some people, it's been since last month. It's just this really big feeling of almost like finality, which, you know, it's great because when there are endings, it means that new beginnings are soon to follow. You cannot have one without the other is basically the point here. So let's go ahead and get started. This is general. This may not resonate with everyone. And if it does, great. Reminder that time is an illusion and energy is fluid. So this may not resonate for today. Okay. It may have already happened. It may not happen until next week. And there it is right there. The world's card completion. Exactly as I felt. Ten. One door closes, another one opens. A huge life cycle completed. It's not just because today is the 10th, but it's also because it's what the current energy has been for, I would say, the past maybe week is what I could feel. Very extreme finality. <clears throat> Completion of a huge life cycle too. And this is a huge life lessons because this is Saturn. Saturn rules the world, what, right? When it comes to this, um, this particular card. So you're talking about huge Saturnian lessons, meaning karma. Because Saturn is all about karma. A lot of people, these are the lessons that they were learning about was self-sabotage, low self-esteem, being codependent, addictions, anything that would fall into the category of the devil. It could also be Capricorn energy. So for a lot of people, there would be extreme breakthroughs in Capricorn season, which starts ending part of this month because it starts after Sagittarius season. A lot of breakthroughs are coming. Why? Because it's time. Everything happens in divine timing, right? This is also truth here too with the world and the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords is about the truth. It's communication also. It's tremendous healing here that's going to start happening with a lot of people when it comes to past life karma. A lot of truths are being revealed. So for some people, they're finally starting to see the light, for example, or like, so to speak, when it comes to past life traumas, they're going, oh, aha, I have this particular issue, this codependency, this addiction because of past life things. I get it now. And it's almost like the light bulb goes off and the truth of it comes out right now, right? Because it's time. Everything in divine timing. Because it's just time to wrap it up. A lot of people are going to be traveling soon. And during travel, whether this is literally getting on an airplane or really like, you know, moving um, physically, a lot of people are going to start having these epiphanies almost during this time. For some of you, it's during astro travel. For some, it's traveling between the dimensions, 3D and 5D. So some of you guys can be having these breakthroughs in the dream state. Very moon-like energy, right? Very Neptunian because that's all about the subconscious mind. <coughs> Just extreme amounts of clarity will come the more you close things out. Something flew. No death. This could be a Scorpio. Death is endings and new beginnings. It's this repeat theme. This is re being reborn too. This is about rising up from one's ashes. And in order to rise up from the ashes like a phoenix, you got to crash and burn. You got to crash and burn. That energy of, for some of you, it was a codependencies. It was the trying to please everybody but yourself. It was, you know, not having self-love and putting others first. And then you realize your cup is dry. That's why self-love is so important. I am love. It's my whole mantra. It's everything I have built around myself. Because it all starts with us. It's never been about them. It's always been about us. <laughs> this is someone who's learned that. 
through hardships, through getting their hearts broken, through these karmic lessons. Someone here is rising the fuck up. You or them? What's on the bottom of the deck? The tower. Sudden and unexpected faded events that create sudden endings, which as we know, because you can't have one without the other, create sudden new beginnings. And when I tell you, you can't write the shit, you can't write the shit. The four of swords is prayer because it's surrender. Look at this person in the card. Someone here surrendered to something. They put their faith in the universe. They've literally surrendered and said, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to stop trying to control my circumstances. And those things that I can control, I will go ahead and, you know, forcefully take control over those things, whatever it is, for everybody's going to be different. For the rest, it is surrendering to what you can't control. This is about saying, I can't control the time. It's everything's in divine timing. I'm going to go with the flow. This, that's what that feels like. It feels like someone's surrendering to that. It's a time thing. Someone's surrendering to divine timing. They're, they're, they've stopped trying to control it. You prayed and you said, I will allow this to come to me. There's too many cards. The lovers. There you go. This is two people coming together, destined and faded. Very, very, very carnal energy between two people. Very sexual. Extreme chemistry. Like, I mean, from the second you guys meet... Or, or, or is in the vicinity of each other is this chemical thing that starts happening physically and then of course the souls recognize each other because this would be someone from a past life you've had more than one lifetime with them so your souls would remember each other almost before you you would your souls would know before you even meet put it that way <coughs> it's finally time for these two to come together now The sun in the background is very important. Hold on, I need to turn on another light. Hopefully that helps a bit. This is also making a decision. Head over heart. So for example, logically speaking, maybe if you look at something logically, it's no. But your heart and your soul tells you yes. When you stop and you surrender, you start to align with things. And maybe the things that you're starting to align with right now, logically speaking, it's what are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you choose that? What, why are you quitting your job? Why are you breaking up with that person? And it's like you can't explain it to other people because maybe logically to the outside it doesn't make sense. But to you, it does. Something in your soul tells you, I'm done in this particular relationship. It, that's not my person. Even though to everyone else it looks like you guys are this happy, perfect couple. They don't fulfill you. And vice versa. For a lot of people, you stayed in a relationship due to codependencies. <clears throat> Being comfortable. But it lacked this. It's like someone's in a very dark place also. And this person comes into your life and it's like they give you life. They literally bring you back from the dead. You guys have heard me channel that for some time now because it's what I keep feeling. Somebody brings somebody back from the dead. Maybe it's because this person had lost hope. And they meet you or you meet them and boom, you're inspired all over again. The sun is very, very symbolic of healing, of growth and prosperity. They bring an extreme amount of clarity because it's about truth, right? And illumination with the sun. But they also bring this sense of comfort. This feeling of comfort washes over you. It's as if you've known this person before, even though, let's say, for example, you're strangers, okay? But it's because you've met in past lives. They're not a stranger. Your souls are very familiar. 
your physical bodies may be strangers, but that's about it. Very destined and fated events are going to start happening, and it's going to lead up until Capricorn season. Wish fulfillment. The Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. Wishing for this. Praying for this. Two people praying for each other. Two people wishing on a star or a starfish. Nine is an ending. Ten is completions. There's an ending here that has to happen. And I'm telling you guys, it feels very much so like tower-like energy. And tower-like energy doesn't always have to be bad. People fear the tower. And yes, it's because it happens suddenly and out of nowhere and hits you, hits you and, and you know, it's a sideline. But it's course correction and it's divine intervention when it's the tower. Look at that. The four of wands. 11-11, which a lot of people are seeing. Three years ago, it was the very first set of numbers that I saw. Because it's the first set of numbers you see when you start to spiritually awaken. Four of Wands is the card of marriage and commitment. This is someone that you will absolutely become, as I said that, it was 11-11 on the timer of this video. This is someone here that you are going to build something very solid with. Four is about stability. It's the second four. Two very stable people coming together to build a very stable foundation. And that's how come the tower energy came in. Because for one or maybe both, the existing structure was unstable. You got to build a future with someone solid. Someone here is looking for something very stable and solid. And they didn't have that with, let's say, a current job. Because it doesn't always have to be about love. Or they couldn't find that with a current person. This is someone here that's going to have it all. It's someone that when you look at them, you go, I can see myself marrying you. I can see myself spending the rest of my life with you. And something tells me they may not be your usual type. I've been channeling an age difference for some of you guys, right? Meeting very destined and faded ways. Hold on. We're not going to take all that. A lot fell out, but I'm not feeling it. <clears throat> we are going to take the one that's upright and it's the queen of swords aquarius gemini libra energy but it's also someone who is very sure about something she may also seem and i said she because even though it could be about both genders it's about the energy this energy feels female she is very sure about what she wants in her life Therefore, to approach this energy, you better have your shit straight. I almost feel like if you guys haven't met yet, the other person, not this energy, although they could be any sign, right? It's just someone who is very, very sure about what they want. They almost seem unapproachable, okay? So because they seem unapproachable, the other person is spying. Because they're trying to see what their best approach would be. How do I approach this person? They seem emotionally detached. Very focused. Very driven. How do I approach? That's what the other person is thinking. King of Pentacles, goddamn. How long have we been channeling the King of Pentacles? Lord Jesus, this is a fucking. This is someone who, with their shit together. You or them, possibly both of you. It's the energy, not the gender, but the King of Pentacles could be someone Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. It's a person who is extremely stable. They're very well manifested. It's someone who has a lot to bring to the table, and someone who bought the fucking table. They don't sit at the table with nothing to offer. They offer it all because they have it all. This is material comforts, but this is also in status. Someone here is very successful. And even someone as extremely successful like this, let's say they're the boss or they're in charge or whatever in their daily life, right? Let's say they are the captain. They are the fucking 
CEO, right? They're the boss. They're whatever. They're in charge of their team. They're in charge of their employees. This high-powered person is intimidated by this person, even if this person is not as well manifested as that other one. Although this woman right here feels very established herself. I think in 3D standards, though, you would think she would be more intimidated by him just based on like let's say for example this person's like i said a ceo of let's say maybe a million dollar or billion dollar business or they're in the public eye right and this person may not be it just doesn't matter what it what the point is is this person is intimidated they have it all but they know an energy like this, she doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Queen of Swords doesn't care what you have. Because she, she says, I can have that too. I can get that too. I already have that. I don't give a fuck what you have. What, 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 can, what can you offer me? And they go, whew, not like the usual. I can't impress this person with money. I can't. She doesn't care. I cannot impress this person with status because she doesn't care. So therefore, I better come correct something flipped the empress my god they see you as having it all literally pure abundance too with the empress she is powerful but yet very nurturing and this is how they see you or you see them they see you as being the possible mother of their children or child some of you are going to be the mother of their child or children God, they see you as having it all. This is someone here who has built her empire brick by brick and has been single and not bothered by it. This energy here is an empress by herself. She doesn't need an emperor to give her that status. She already has a status on her own. She rules whether you're with her or without her. Either way, she wins. How do you approach a person like that? You better fucking come correct. Or vice versa, right? If you're the cross watcher. <coughs> the queen of wands. They see you as being a very, very extreme, extremely sexy person. A, per a woman... <clears throat> Who makes moves someone who's passionate someone who's a go-getter literally they see you as as everything smart attractive go-getter not only do they find you physically attractive they admire you for your ability to make moves someone yourself made look at that counterparts the king of wands and then he has to come in correct. It's counterparts. Doesn't have to be fire signs at all. This is the energy. She makes moves. And she's on the go. She ain't stopping for nobody. He says, I better fucking get in there right now. And I better come and get her. It's this energy. There is action being taken place right now. Because as I predicted, Scorpio season we knew would be about kind of sitting back and observing very you know, Scorpio energy. Sagittarius energy is about go-getting. This King of Wands got his eye on somebody, honey. And he got his eyes on the prize. There are moves that are going to be made. Communication will start coming in if it hasn't already for some of you. Now, for a lot of you, this pertains to a person you may not have ever met yet. There it is. True love. The Ace of Cups. The Holy Grail. This person wants to offer you this. They offer you this cup because they have a full cup. They offer this cup because they're mirroring you. You have a full cup also. It's very two of cups energy. I am love. I always tell you guys, this is why my I am love bracelets are top seller and they're back in stock for those that, you know, want to order them. 
every time I put a new batch up, they sell out continuously because it's my number one seller. My I Am Love candles also that's, you know, in collaboration with my friend Kiyoki at Aloha Elixir. The I Am Love bracelets are infused with energy that helps you clear out the heart chakra, that helps you fix your crown. You know, my new Camelot bracelets are also to do the same thing too, is to help instill the king and queen inside of you, to help you take back your throne. This is self-love, but with self-love now, you attract a counterpart. The ace of wands, and so it begins. Moves absolutely happening. Action, movement coming. Starting in Sagittarius season, leading up to Capricorn season. This is a new relationship, and as you see, it matches up with the king and the queen of wands. Oh, this is beautiful, beautiful energy. Jesus Christ, it's beautiful. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get an oracle card or two from the Doreen Virtue Romance Angels Jack. I want to remind you guys, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's xi underscore missy underscore xi. If you want to come and meet me in Brooklyn, New York, the ending of this month, click on the box below. There's a link to purchase tickets. I have some tickets left. And if you want to purchase any of my bracelets, click on the links below. It's going to take you to my website. For those that want to purchase bulk, 10 bracelets, it's 10% off. Because I have a lot of people that are buying bracelets for Christmas gifts. Okay. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. You guys are going to be like two teenagers in love. That's the energy. Look what's in the bottom of that deck. Chemistry. I told you guys, there's a strong magnetic attraction here. There will be insane amounts of attraction. But it will also be like, <coughs> almost like two people that fell in love for the first time. Like two sweethearts, like high school sweethearts. But it's because of the fact that you guys are both kind of throwing caution to the wind. And it's almost like you've never had a love like this. Maybe you both have been in love before, but not like this. <coughs> Extreme sexual attraction here between two people. You guys bring out this childlike quality out of the other, and not in an immature way, but in a very innocent way. The way you guys are going to look at each other, people are going to stop and stare. Look at the way these two people are in this picture. He is just in absolute adoration of her. And she's just hanging on to him. It's this beautiful love. Look at the way he looks at her. And she is just soaking it all in. Finally, both of their prayers have been answered. Oh my gosh, I got the chills. All right, you guys. Thank you so very much. Thank you for all of your likes, shares, and subscriptions. I absolutely appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I'll see you guys again really soon. Love you.